Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. In Jewish culture, Haman is a prototype, or not even a prototype, a uh, personification of the arch anti Semites of any era. In Jewish culture, every era has its Haman. For instance, Hitler would have been the Haman of the mid 20th century. Um, the popes with the inquisitions would have been the Hamons of the Middle Ages and so forth. There's always been a Haman. The Haman of the uh, 1990s was Saddam Hussein, saying he was going to destroy Jerusalem and destroy Israel and give the land to the uh, Palestinian Arab Muslims. That was his claim, and he shot Katusha rockets at Israel. Well, we go back to the book of Esther that is read ceremonially as a scroll during the Feast of, of the Purim. You have a despotic madman on the banks of the Tigris and Euphrates River in Iraq saying he's going to destroy the Jews. He's defeated on the 14th of the month of Adar, and the Jews celebrate. The year? 1991. What year did Saddam Hussein surrender? What day did Saddam Hussein surrender to the Americans and British after firing the Scud missiles at Haifa and Tel Aviv? He actually surrendered on the Feast of Esther, the 14th of Adar. Same location, on the banks of the Tigers and Euphrates, a madman with the same agenda. Yes, these things are of prophetic significance. They are absolutely of prophetic significance. But I'd like to go further with this. This speaks as a general truth, but it certainly has a particular prophetic emphasis for the last days. From the book of Obadiah, only one chapter, verse 15. For the day of the Lord, that tells us it's the last days, the day of the Lord draws near on all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your dealings will return on your own head. Obadiah was decrying Arab nations and other nations around Israel who were collaborating with and delighting in what the Babylonians would do to Israel and the Jews. Only he shifts the time frame forward to the last days. The day of the Lord draws near. Genesis 12, 1 to 3 comes into play. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. You have Monsieur Alain, the, the President de France, Holland, the President of France. He has an agenda supported by Barack Obama and John Kerry to force Israel to give up defensible borders to organizations committed to its destruction, like Hamas and Hezbollah. Go back to the 1967 ceasefire lines, which were not even a border, they were only ceasefire lines, where Israel was about eight and a half miles wide, undefensible, and you're supposed to give this to people who are already firing Katusha rockets from Gaza. No sooner had Israel left Gaza, when Gaza was simply used as a platform to continue the jihad against Israel. They shoot at Israel with Katushas, and then when Israel is forced to fire back in self-defense, the Muslims, the Islamists, extreme Muslims, they use their own women and children as human shields. After shooting at the Israeli women and children, they use their own as human shields, so the BBC and CNN will be able to come in and say, see what the Jews did. Well, Barack Obama and John Kerry had their anti-Israel agenda, as did Hillary Clinton. Remember, the Obama administration 
is particularly anti-Israel. It's been more anti-Israel than any other administration. Hillary Clinton is the same, and so is John Kerry. The Bush family were no friends of Israel. They were in the pockets of the Saudi Arabians. But Obama has gone even further. Obama is supporting the French initiative to have the UN redraft the partition of 1948 in such a manner as to force Israel back to its pre-1967 ceasefire line artificial borders and to give legal leverage to the boycott Israel movement as happened against apartheid South Africa. In fact, the Arabs in Israel have a higher standard of living than the Arabs in the other Arab countries that surround it. You've never seen this genocide that happens in Syria happen in uh, Israel to the Arab community. And it's particularly notable that Israel has the best human rights record, and certainly Arab Christians and Druzis are far better off living as Israelis than they are living in Muslim countries. Nonetheless, Israel gets singled out by France and by the EU. They're continually pushing this boycott agenda supported by Obama. Remember, Obama went to an anti-Semitic church that had Louis Farrakhan, the radical Muslim who said he flew in flying saucers, preaching in it. Um, Jeremiah Wright, Obama called him his spiritual mentor. The man was vehemently anti-Israel, and it'd be hard to say he wasn't anti-Semitic in the opinion of many people. In the opinion of many, he was an anti-Semite. Just listening to what he says. Well, let's look at this. this is Obama. What we see happening in Paris with Charlie Hebo killings, what we see happening in Paris with that theater shoot-up and those restaurant shoot-ups, what we see happening in Brussels today, make no mistake about it. These terrible things, and I feel nothing but compassion for the victims and their families. But it's Obadiah, verse 15. It's very much Obadiah 15. As the day of the Lord draws near, as you have done, it will be done to you. These same nations who are playing footsies with Hamas and with Islamic terror and the Muslim Brotherhood, and that includes Obama's administration, they're going to reap what they sowed. What these militant Islamic organizations are doing to moderate Muslims, to Christians in these Arab countries, and to Israel, they're going to do to those countries who side with them. These terrible things, and I'm sorry about it, that are happening in Europe and will continue to happen, are Obadiah 15. You begin aligning yourself with radical Islamists against Israel who are persecuting the church. You align yourself with those people, give them visas to come into your own country and take them in as refugees, when Saudi Arabia and rich Gulf states swimming in oil don't even want them. But you have to bring them into the West, into Germany, and into England, and into America. It's absurd. Why don't they go to oil-rich Islamic countries? But you've got to reap what you sowed. You curse Israel, and you align yourself with those militant Islamist forces that are persecuting Arab Christians. We've had Christian children beheaded by ISIS. Christian children beheaded. And Obama said virtually nothing. Just this past week, now he's admitting, or Carrie's admitting, this genocide. We knew that a, a year and a half ago. The utter hypocrisy and incompetence is unbelievable. Yet they want to press Israel to compromise with militant Islam. There's no difference between Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, the Muslim Brotherhood. They all have the same ideology. It was the Muslim Brotherhood who murdered Anwar Sadat. Let's understand this. Obadiah 15. As Israel faces Islamic terror, those nations siding with the Palestinian Authority, who are a little better than Hamas, 
and who are siding with Hamas and who are pressing Israel to give up their survivability strategically, those nations are going to suffer the same thing that the Islamists are doing to Israel. That is the reason God has allowed these terrible things to happen in large part in Paris and in Brussels and elsewhere. I have no doubt it was a factor in the San Bernardino shootings because of our corrupt government, because of the corruption in our White House. These things are quite frightening and quite serious. Obadiah 15 is a very, very important passage of scripture. Now, Jacob, uh, I just had another question come in from uh, Brian Bayless here at uh, Fellowship Bible Chapel in Columbus. Yes. Um, Times, uh, there's, a, there's a rumor out there uh, going around that Times Square and Trafalgar Square will both have 50-foot replicas of the entrance to the Temple of Baal. Now, consider that that's on the Internet. Um, have you heard anything about that in England, about Trafalgar Square? No, I have not, but we've had similar things already happening in England so many times. They've actually had public processions with Gog and Magog uh, in effigies being paraded through the streets of London. These things would not be as uh, precedent-setting this side of the Atlantic as they would in America. Okay, thank you, Jacob.